I'm at the Battle Station today to show you how to transform your PC into a powerful PlayStation 3 emulator using RPCS3. With just a few quick downloads and this simple to follow guide, you'll be playing your favorite PlayStation 3 games on your PC in no time at all. Fire up your PC because you're about to learn something new. Normally I start out by showing you all of the downloads that you need, but I think in this case it makes more sense to start by making sure that you have your games formatted in the correct format for the emulator. To that end, I have this folder called Demo, and I have a few games staged here in various formats. With native PS3 hardware, you can use .iso formatted disk images, but in this case the emulator needs this specific format to work correctly. They need to be in PS3 Game Folder, PS3 Update Folder, and ps3disc.sfb format. Fortunately, even if you have your games in .iso format, that is not a problem. In Windows, you can double click directly into the .iso disk image, and guess what you'll find there? PS3 game, PS3 update, and ps3disc.sfb. So the great news here is this is a really simple fix. All you have to do is drag over all of the files and folders inside the .iso folder, right click and select copy. From here, wherever you wanna keep your game files for the emulator, right click, select new and select folder. Name this folder whatever name that you'll recognize for the game that you're gonna copy the files into. In this case, this is All Pro Football 2K8, so that's what I'm gonna name this folder. Double click into the newly created folder. From here, right click and select paste. Now you'll have a complete record of all of the folders and files that you need to run your game that were originally in the .iso file. Okay, now is the part with the downloads. The first one is the RPCS3 emulator itself. I have it linked for you in the video description. Be sure to read the anti-piracy notice before you click the I understand button at the bottom of this window. From the RPCS3 homepage, scroll down until you see the button labeled Download and click on it. From here, scroll down and you'll be able to download the version that matches your platform. In this specific demonstration, I'm using Windows, so I'm going to select the Windows version of the software, but it also supports other platforms. To grab the latest version of RPCS3 for Windows, click the Download button in the Windows column. Next up, you'll need to download a copy of the official firmware for the PlayStation 3 from the Sony website. Again, this is linked for you in the video description. Since the last time I took a look at this, this process has changed just a little bit. To get access to the firmware download button, scroll down on this page until you see the text link that says update from a computer. When you click on the text here, it will reveal the download button for the most recent version of the system software. At this time, it's version 4.90. With some browsers, you can simply click on the link here to download the firmware. With Chrome, though, there's an exception. If you click on it, and you can click on it as many times as you want, it will never actually download the firmware to your computer. Here's how to get around that. Right-click on the link and select Open in New Window. This opens up a new Chrome window, but it's completely blank. All you have to do to get the download from here is go up to Refresh in the top left corner and click on it. This will instantly download the firmware to your computer. There's one more download you'll need, and it's the PlayStation 3 Wireless Controller plugin for Windows. It's hosted on Mega, and it's linked for you in the video description. Just click the Download button here to start the download process, and grab this installer file to send to your computer. Okay, let's get all of this stuff sorted out. Right-click on File Explorer, and then open up your Downloads folder. You're going to find three downloads here, one that's in ZIP format, one that's in .pup format, and one that's in 7z format. We'll need to get the two compressed files uncompressed, and that starts with the .7z file. I'm actually using an open source extraction tool called Zipware, and I have it linked for you in the video description if you need it. I highly recommend that when you extract this, that you extract it to a subfolder. Otherwise, you're gonna have a ton of files sitting around in your downloads folder to make heads or tails of. Once you have the 7Z extracted, right-click on it and delete it to send it to the recycle bin. And remember, anything that you send to the recycle bin is still archived there for you, just in case you need it. Next up, extract the zip file for the controller plugin. This is really straightforward. Just right-click, select Extract All, and then extract the software. Be sure to uncheck the Show Extracted Files When Complete box, and then Extract. Once it's done, right-click on the zip file, and delete it to send it to the recycle bin. You're not gonna need it anymore. 
This next step is optional, but I think it makes sense. The whole RPCS3 folder is portable, so I think it makes sense to rename it to something that you'll recognize a little more than the default title. In this case, I'm just going to rename it to say RPCS3, as that kind of makes sense. To start tidying things up, grab the ps 3 updateputp file and drag and drop it into the RPCS3 folder. There are a handful of ways you can optionally connect a controller to RPCS3. In this case, I'm going to be using a genuine Sony DualShock 3 controller. Specific to this controller, double-click in the Wireless Controller Setup folder, then double-click in the subfolder, then double-click on the .msi file in this subfolder to start the setup process. It's pretty straightforward. Click Install near the bottom right corner of the window, and at the UAC prompt it appears, click on Yes to continue. Once the setup process is complete, click Finish near the bottom right corner of the window. You'll be instructed to restart Windows in order for the installation changes to take effect. You can absolutely restart Windows at this point. I'm selecting No here specifically to be able to take care of one quick maintenance task first. Go back two levels in the navigation structure until you're back at the root of the Downloads folder. From here, I recommend grabbing that installer package and just dragging it and dropping it right into the RPCS3 folder. That way it's backed up here in case you ever need it in the future. Okay, now for those controller install files to take effect, I'll go ahead and restart Windows by selecting the Windows icon, the power button, and selecting Restart. Okay, now that Windows is restarted, I'm going to open up File Explorer again by right-clicking on the icon and then selecting Download since that's where RPCS3 is located. Let's launch it for the first time. Double-click on the RPCS3 folder. You're looking for a file called RPCS3.exe. It's a blue icon with a big white 3 on it. The first time you launch the program, you'll be presented with this pop-up menu. There are one mandatory and four optional checkboxes here. You can elect to put a quick start icon on your desktop. You can add RPCS3 to your Windows start menu, which I'd like to do. You can launch the program optionally in dark mode, which I would like to do. There's a mandatory checkbox that says, I have read the quick start guide. It's definitely worth doing. And there's an optional checkbox on the right side to not show this menu again moving forward. I like the idea, so I'll check that. To continue on to the emulator, click continue in the bottom left corner of the window to close it out and open the application. We've copied the firmware file into the RPCS3 main folder, but you also have to install it into the application. Go up to file and click on it in the left corner, then come down to install firmware and click on it. You should already be in that RPCS3 folder. Locate the ps 3 updatepup file and either double click on it or single click on it to select it and then come down to Open and click on Open. You'll see a pop-up window appear in the middle of the screen with a progress indicator for the firmware installation process. Once it's complete, you'll receive a confirmation message on screen. To close it out, come over to OK on the right corner of the window and click on OK to close this out. This actually is step one of two of the installation process. The system also has to compile some PowerPC modules to get the hamster running in the wheel. To get the DualShock 3 controller working, two things need to be done. First, you need to leave it plugged in by USB to your computer while you're using the emulator. Second, in the navigation ribbon at the top of this window, click Pads. Take a look at the top left corner in the pop-up window for Pads. There's a drop-down right underneath Player 1 and it defaults to Keyboard. If you want to use something other than the keyboard to control the game, like this DualShock 3 controller, select it from the drop-down list. To check your controller's function and calibration, there's a checkbox in the bottom right corner that says Show Emulated Values. Check this box by clicking on it. Now take a look in the two boxes down at the bottom right corner. There are two dots near the center of both of them. They represent your left and right analog sticks, and the dots near the center represent calibration. To center both of your analog sticks, all you have to do is basically just rotate them a few times in place, and then you should see that the dots on both the left and the right come very close or almost completely perfect to center. Once you've confirmed that the sticks are calibrated, come down to Save near the bottom right corner of this window and click on it to lock in these changes. Next up, let's add your games to the emulator. Go back up to the top navigation and click on File. Scroll down about halfway and you'll see a listing that says Add Games. Click on it and you'll be asked to locate the folder with your games. 
Remember, I have a folder called demo set up here with some games already pre-staged in subfolders. So I'm gonna select demo and then come down to select folder and click on it to lock in this change. You'll see a pop-up window appear here giving you several checkbox options. The one that I think absolutely should be checked here is pre-compile caches. This is gonna take some time on the front end, but it's gonna save you a lot of time on the back end every time that you load a game. You do also have the options for checkboxes to add shortcuts for individual games if you'd like. Once you've made your selections, click OK in the bottom right corner. This process can take anywhere from several minutes to, well, a lot of minutes, depending upon how many games you've added to the emulator. Just know that it's worth it because you're saving yourself a lot of time every time you go to load a game moving forward. You'll be notified with a pop-up message on screen once the game import process is complete. Click OK in the bottom of the window to close it out and go to the next step. It makes sense to make sure that the global settings for graphics are set to optimize your gameplay. To do this, go to the top navigation ribbon and click on Config. In this pop-up window in the text navigation at the top, Locate the listing for GPU and click on it. There are two key configurations here. The first one is that the emulator is set by default to use Vulkan for graphics processing, and it really is the best option. However, if you find that you're dropping frames or have poor performance on your system, click this and choose one of the other options like OpenGL, for example. Next up, the emulator is set by default to run in 720p mode or 1280x720 resolution. There are some PlayStation 3 games that absolutely support all the way up to 1080p graphics. If you want to take advantage of that extra resolution and your system can support it, click the drop down that says 1280x720 recommended. From here, right underneath the first listings on the drop down, you'll see one that says 1920x1080. Select this and your games will run at a maximum of 1080p resolution where supported. Then come down to the bottom right corner and click on save to save these changes. It's worth mentioning that you can also create custom settings for individual games based on the global settings you've already created. To do this, hover over one of the games that you want to make individualized changes for. Right click on it, then select create custom configuration from default settings. From this pop-up window, you can create individualized, customized settings for any single game in the emulator, and it will still utilize the global settings that we've just set up previously. In this case, I'm not adding any custom settings to this game, but I wanted you to at least be aware of how it's done, should you choose to do so. I'll hit the red X button in the top right corner to close out this pop-up window and go back to the main menu of the emulator. Some games have patches that you can download and install directly into the emulator. To do this, go up to the listings in the top navigation, find the listing for Manage, and click on it. There's an option in the drop-down that's called Game Patches. Scroll down to it through the list of choices and click on it. The first time you run this, you'll be asked if you want to update the list of available patches. You absolutely do, so click on the Yes button to continue. Since it's just downloading some text information, it's almost instantaneous. There's one kind of a problem here, though, all of the games are shown all at the same time. And there's only three games installed here, so trying to sort through all of this would be kind of a hot mess. Here's how to fix that. There's a checkbox right at the top center of this window that says only show owned games. If you click this, it will only show patches for the games that you've installed into the emulator. In this case, none of these games have patches available for them, so there's nothing to see here. However, if you install a game and there are available patches to download, you can download them directly from this pop-up menu. Once you've installed any game patches, select the Save button to close out the window. There are a couple of basic steps you can do here to improve the look of the emulator. The first one is, there's a slider up near the top of the window, and if you move it to the right, you can increase the size of the game icons and the game text, or you can slide it to the left to decrease this and show more of them in the window. All that fancy text in the window pane in the bottom of the emulator is interesting, but if you don't want to look at it, here are two ways you can deal with this. One, you can reduce it by just grabbing the slider and dragging it up and down. Or if you want to close this window entirely, just click the X button on the right side of the window. Now you've got some extra room in the emulator window to bring the games up larger or bring them back down smaller and make them fit in a way that works best for you. In this case, I'll just put them all in the window at the same time. Before you fire up a game, it's worth taking a look at its resolution options. 
For example, Tron Evolution here supports resolutions all the way up to that maximum 1080p in 16x9 widescreen. That's why as long as your system supports it, I think it's a good idea to push the resolution all the way up to 1920 by 1080 p globally in the emulator. You've done the work, time to enjoy the benefits. Right click on the game you want to launch and select boot from the list of options. Here's a really cool bonus tip for you. As long as you have HDR turned on in Windows and you have an HDR compatible display, the emulator will also operate in HDR during gameplay. This will give you an even brighter and more detailed image. Amazing! And sure enough, the games load just fine and the DualShock 3 controller works exactly as expected in gameplay. PlayStation 3 is not the only system you can emulate on your PC. Check this out. You can also play your favorite Vita games right on your PC, no Vita required. That video is shown on screen and linked in the video description and pinned comment. I'll look forward to seeing you over there.